So just a couple questions here that I have. Um, first one, uh, being that a lot of us coaches here, um, well, not just in Ottawa, but across the world, we train the elderly. Mm -hmm. What about your overall fitness at 55 years of age has changed being that um, your present physical strength is, can match those of an athletic level? So, you know, being 55, I am in the best shape of my life I've ever been. Um, so I really don't believe the age is, a, is that much of a factor. The conditions we have as we age are the biggest factor. So I train all my clients like they're athletes. And then to me, the job of a coach is to figure out wh where they are, what their goals are, and what the issues they have to deal with primarily are, and then how do we move them from point A to point B. So yes, I, most of the majority of my clients are over 40, 50, 60 years old, which is natural because I'm over 50. So I think that's one of the reasons why they gravitate towards me. They see me in my age, you know, and I'm riding motorcycles and I'm jacked and I'm getting in better shape at an age where most people are retiring and, and suffering and stuff. So obviously that attracts people and they're like, well, how is he doing that? What's the secret? And I'll tell people this all the time. The only secret is action, take action and stuff. But what we have to do as coaches, it really is who the individual is and what do we have to work on and what do we have to attack first and what do we have to do first with them. So my big thing with anyone is getting to know them a little bit, uh, getting them to move. So we, as coaches, we all have our warm ups and we do some mobility stuff and that kind of thing. So I'm watching the first time very intently how they move, not just how they move, but how I'm watching their face, uh, how their body's reacting to things and stuff. Um, and then from there, what I'm doing is figuring out what, what, what do I want to do next? And then also understand what they want to do next and then have those conversations and saying, okay, well, this is, this is the plan I'm thinking of, right? You need to connect to your clients and stuff. But at the end of the day, you have to take the lead. You're the leader in the situation. That's why they're coming to you. Um, I've had people come to me that are very broken physically. I've had people come to me that are very broken mentally. I have people come to me that are both. And the answer is movement. The answer is taking action. The answer is eating better. So I have four non-negotiable uh, principles that I work with every day. Uh, the first one is exercise, the second one is food mastery, the third one is mindset, and the, th the fourth one is personal presentation. And they're very simple, and I tell people, our goal every day is to hit these four, no matter what, for a few reasons. One, they're the basis for everything moving forward, but they might be the only wins you have today, but at least you have some wins today, especially if your world's in a shit storm. And a lot of people, you know, uh, are in a shit storm. Businesses, careers, families, health, everything. There's a lot of pressures on us. And let's talk about how amplified that was again, going back to COVID and stuff and coming out of COVID. Um, so to me, we fight for these non-negotiables. And what happens is they take traction. They take traction, they build, they build momentum. So it's, it's the discipline of those non-negotiables versus the motivation. Motivation will come and go, right? But discipline is what we need to fight for. So I broke it down into those four basic principles because they've simplified. And from them, you know, we, we just grow and outgrow and, and move forward. Listen, anyone who tells you they can't lose weight, we know that it's because they're not in a calorie deficit. It's that simple. I don't care what the diet plan they're following is, eat healthy or not, you can fucking lose weight on Mars bars. If you're taking in 250 calories less a day than you burn off and it's in Mars bars, you're gonna lose weight. How you're gonna perform and function will be a little different in Mars bars versus <laughs> whole food, but it's the same. It doesn't matter. I fast, I do this, I don't care about any of that bullshit. It's a calorie deficit that causes weight loss. The other thing we need to do is move. And if it's a, something as simple as walking every day, get on a stationary bike every day, three minutes with no power. When I was 398 pounds, it was a stationary bike with no power on. It was three minutes and I was fucking cooked. But I said, tomorrow I'm gonna do it again. Tomorrow I'm gonna do it again. And I added a minute and I added a minute and then it built and I had to turn the thing on. But we just built on it. But I did not go to bed unless I fucking did those four non-negotiables and stuff. And this is, the, I'm a guy who's been doing this for 30 years. I have all the knowledge in the world. Right? But the problem is when I looked in the mirror, what I thought and believed was what was looking back at me. So at 400 pounds, right, what I thought every day and what I did every day was 400 pounds, right? The knowledge I had, if you ask me how to lose weight, David, at 400 pounds, I tell you exactly how to do it and I'm fucking right because I've been doing it for 30 years. But I wasn't doing it, right? right? So it's one thing to have knowledge. It's funny, I was just listening to a couple of things on cardio this morning about that. We have all the knowledge. Remember we talked about pre-internet and now the internet? There's more knowledge now than ever before. Knowledge isn't the, isn't the thing that's holding us back. It's action, right? right? So we talked about earlier, said, you know, what do we want to talk about today? I want to talk about 
why we don't do the things we're supposed to do, right? right? The, to me, if I want to get to somebody, I want to figure out their why. I want to find out their pain points and stuff like that, right? And get them to look at it. I got sober nine years ago, and my biggest fear about getting sober was the fact that I couldn't hide what I was truly feeling and thinking behind booze anymore. I didn't crave booze. I craved the fact that I didn't want to feel what I was feeling. So my biggest fear of getting sober was I'm going to have to deal with those fucking thoughts and mindset and that kind of stuff. Um, but, and so to me, it's the same thing. If someone comes up to me and says, I've tried everything and nothing's working, I'm like, you tried nothing, you know, because you're, you're not doing any of the work and stuff. But let's keep it simple. Let's go to 2,500 calories for a guy. Let's go to 16, 1,700 calories for a girl. Uh, the majority of them are going to lose weight because they're eating three and 4,000 calories, right? We know this. Right. If we don't measure it in baseline, we have nothing to adjust. We know this. We have to find a way to get them to buy into that. Right. You know, I'm going to have to eat like this the rest of my life. No, but if you want to feel like this the rest of your life, that, yeah. you know, this is what's <laughs> happening, right? So it really comes down to that. Personal presentation is the one that surprises people the most, but I don't care who you are. You get up, you take a shower, you shave, you put a pair of clean pants on, a clean t-shirt on, you feel good, right? right? Because, you know, treat every day like it's a job interview. Right. Because it is, right? right? So to me, that's the biggest thing that people are shocked the most of. Especially, let's go back to COVID again. I said I wasn't going to talk about it, David, but you keep bringing it back there, <laughs> right? The biggest thing about COVID, it was a running joke. People working from home only had to wear a shirt because they were in the video and they only saw it from their head up and stuff like that, right? Well, the problem is, well, I, I don't have to be online till 9, so I'll get up at 8.55, right? Uh, I'm not prepared for anything and stuff. It doesn't matter. I'm in my fucking pajamas all day. Well, what are you ready for in life in your pajamas? It's like when the guys show up at the gym in flip-flops. I'm like, really? You're here to fucking be a beast? You're here to crush it in your fucking flip-flops? Come on, man. Show up, <laughs> right? Look at all the action movies and stuff like that. Before the, the hero goes into battle, what do we always see? The montage, okay. sharpening his knife, <laughs> loading his weapon, putting everything in, the veins in his arms. Motherfucker's ready for battle. Do that every morning. Right. Get up, get ready, right. right? That kind of stuff. Like you're going on an interview. When you started dating someone for the first time, right? You were in your best behavior. You fucking washed, you showered, you cleaned your nethers, right? right? Cause it mattered, right? And what happens in the beginning of a relationship? You're at your best. The glow, oh, she's really awesome. He's really nice or same, same. I don't care what you're into, right? That kind of stuff. But you know, you're in your best behavior. Look forward to seeing each other, right? It mattered. You took the extra time. You got up an hour early. You would drive for two hours, right? That kind of stuff because you were emotionally excited. You were highly motivated, right? Well, the problem is that wanes. How many times do we hear this? And the relationships are important because the relationship we have with other people is very similar to the relationship we have with ourselves. If we don't make ourselves important, then we're going to have trouble making other people important, right? Or we're going to put so much pressure on them to make us feel good because we don't feel good about ourselves. We're going to overburden the situation and stuff like that, right? So at the end of the day, take care of yourself. The plane's going down, put your fucking oxygen mask on first so you're not a burden, but then you can help, right? It's the same thing internally and stuff. Like, so for me, it's very simple. Get up a little earlier, uh, shit shower and shave, right? That kind of thing. Eat a clean meal and get some cardio in minimum as early as possible in the day. And it fires everything up. Everything, the perspective on everything changes because your chemistry has changed. Again, as coaches, we know about serotonin. We know about, you know, the, the chemicals being released in our bodies and the adrenaline and the blood flow and stuff. We know this. Right. Sometimes we have to remind our, even ourselves yeah. about this, right? Sure. But at the end of the day, we need to teach that to the individuals and stuff right. like that, right? And to me, that's the most part. So those four non-negotiables lead the way in everything. And then I just work with the client going back to, you know, how do I deal with clients that are older? How do I establish those four non-negotiables for Sally 250 or Steve 300, right. right? Because they're at that level because of what they've been doing daily. What their non-negotiables have become aren't good, right? Their non-negotiables are, you know, they buy the crap food, they watch seven episodes in a row on Netflix, right? They sleep in, right? That kind of thing. How many times have we heard this? Oh, I don't have time to work out. Really? Because I just saw your last post on Facebook and you just talked about the four episodes of fucking Sons of Anarchy you watched, right? Come on. It's bullshit. It's bullshit, right? They're bullshitting themselves anyway, so. it's <laughs> awesome, man. Um, I know you had said earlier that social media during the pandemic helped motivate you uh, to, to maintain a fit lifestyle uh, and stay healthy. Um, being that you're a vet coach, uh, do you believe that um, an overabundance of information coming from social media could be a negative thing? Mm. What's, your, what's your thoughts on that? Because I know that you kind of touched on it very, very... I, I, to I totally agree. You know, I, I said this before, I'm 55 years old and I have trouble not going down all the rabbit holes on the internet and stuff like that. Can you imagine a 15 year old or a 12 year old or a 25 year old? The information that's coming at us now is at such a speed and volume that, you know, when I was 16 or 18, 
you know, we had three channels on the TV. We were on the farm. Like, you know, there wasn't, you were, you just said you had go do shit because there was shit to do and stuff like that. You know, if you just sat there, you just sat there. Right. Now everything's coming at us. Yeah. So let's go to the social media. So as much as I think it's really cool, I also think that anything, uh, it can be bad, right? right? So, I, and I get accused of this sometimes too, you know, and I hear about it through the grapevine and stuff like that. Oh, you're just bragging all the time when you're on social media about what you're doing with your body and stuff like that. And I go, a little, right? You know, no one thought I was bragging when I was 400 pounds on, on fucking social media. So a little bit. I use it as accountability. Right. I use it as going to talk about being competitive and stuff like that. A friend of mine told me this a long time ago. He goes, because he's been with me, he's still my training partner today and stuff like that. So he's seen me through my ups and downs and my best and my worst. And he told me a long time ago, he says, you know, Kurt, every time you've lost 10, 15 pounds, I've seen you get busier in your business. I've seen it come to you. I've seen your sparkle change in you and stuff. He goes, that's the magic. We used to jokingly say every time I lose 10 or 15 pounds, I generate another thousand dollars a month and stuff, right? And it's true. It's true. So when we talk about when people uh, invest in themselves, so put one dollar in yourself, whether it's an effort, time, coaching or whatever, it's going to come back 10, 50, 100 fold, 100 percent. It's the best investment we're ever going to make, right? So where I think social media is powerful is if you can do something like I'm striving to do, which is tell my story, be authentic. This is what I'm dealing with, right? So November of last year, not 23, 22, I was 259 pounds, best shape of my life, right? And then I had some business partnerships, I was doing things and I got overwhelmed and I started to go sideways and I felt I was going sideways and I knew I was going sideways and I was like, I got to try to fix this. I got to try and fix this. And then finally came to a head about six months ago where I made some devastating changes business wise. Right, I stepped away from a business partnership that was toxic. Uh, it's, uh, it's it's not over yet. I have to deal with a lot of pressures from that, but I had to do what was right because it wasn't right for me anymore. So it's come at a great cost, but it's totally worth it because now I'm back in the gym every day. Now I'm back to training people every day. Now I'm back to doing the things that I am extremely good at, that I enjoy to a super high level, and I'm no longer working 15, 18 hour days. There's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. So we're talking about meets. I run now two or three meets a year. I'm running nine more meets this year. I've really stepped my game up now because that entrepreneurial part of me, that guy that wants to get shit done and take things to the next level, competitive with myself, let's fucking go. Right? So the week of a meet, yeah, I'm working 18 hour days because there's a lot of shit to put together, but we're getting better at it. We're getting smoother at it. Right? But I also know the meets on Saturday come Sunday, the pressure's off. So we can handle anything if we know there's an end date to it, right? If, if I decide there's a meet, there's something going on and it's going to take me 24 hours a day for five days a week, I will literally look at you and go, keep up motherfucker and let's go at 55 right. for two reasons. One, I'm in a shape that I can do this. Two, I also know it's for a finite amount of time right. where it got crazy for me is that where it was just like this every day, every day, every day, no end in sight. And I was getting busier. The business was growing. I was having to do more and more work and then more stress and more toxicity. So at one point I said, I'm just not doing this. Yeah. Right. So that's how I ended up coming over here. I talked to Zach in the morning. One day I said, Zach, I may need to come over here. Uh, are you cool with it? He goes, yeah. What are the parameters you told me? I said, are you cool with it? He goes, yeah, I'm cool with it. I said, well, I'll let you know if I have to pull the trigger on that. And then one day came literally on a, on a Sunday night. I said, Jack, I'll be in at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. He's like, boom, here's your code. Right. And I messaged my clients, boom, we were in here and stuff like that. And that was the restart. That was back in what, August, right. you know, and uh, it's because that's what had to be done. Right. right. So again, even for myself, I had to go back to my non-negotiables. I found that I wasn't training every day. I found that I wasn't eating as well because I don't drink anymore. I don't do drugs. I don't do those things. There's nothing wrong with that stuff. It's just, it's not for me because of who I am. So I went to food. So next thing you know, it's 280 pounds, 290 pounds, 295, 300 pounds. Now it looked much better on me because I was in a better shape overall. Uh, but I knew I wasn't at 260 pounds right. where I was kicking ass, where I like taking my shirt off at any time. I was almost like a CrossFit guy. Any reason to take a shirt off, I was taking my fucking shirt off, right? <laughs> so I caught myself in the last couple of months saying, you know what? When that thing about six months ago, I said, I'm going back to some old ways that I can't afford to do. Right. I can't afford to do it now, David, because I am 55 years old. Right. There's only so many redos, do you know what I mean? Right. So I'm like, I have to fucking do this. Right. And then, so, you know, I think we get presented with things because we haven't learned. We need to learn something and it keeps happening. We haven't learned yet. Right. So that was my thing. And I said, listen, go back to, you train twice a day, you eat clean, you live a life that you're proud of 
and things will come to you. And that's what I did. I went back to doing that. So moved over here. My clients are wonderful. I, I told them all, I said, guys, this is what I got to do. They weren't stupid. They saw what was going on and stuff like that. So they understood. I told them all, I said, listen, I'm moving here. If it's not good for you, we'll work it out, right? That kind of stuff. If it's a good fit, we'll continue, right? But I said, this is just something I have to do. They were all fantastic. They were all like, whatever you need, we trained with you out of a shoe. We trained, half of them trained with me out in the garage years ago, right? So they were still with me, so we don't care. We'll follow you. So that's part of that fear thing I was dealing with is that if I make this change, what happens to what I've rebuilt, right? right? That kind of thing. Right. And like everybody else, when we're tired, right. we're afraid of being more tired, right. right? So when we're tired and we have fear roll in, we're weak, right? It's not a bad thing, it's a reality thing. So I had to find a way to go back to strengthening myself. So going back to when I deal with people and most of my clientele that are in their 50s, I feel that a lot of them that come to see me are dealing with some version of this, some version of fear, some version of weakness, and deep down they know that they're not done yet. There's still an 18 year old side that wants to run around naked and fuck shit up, right? Yeah. And they feel very far from it and at 55, 60, you know, what do we live today now? The average life expectancy for a man is like 80 something now, 78 or whatever. Right. That's a lot of years left, yeah. right? That kind of thing. Uh, I want to live to be 100. I want to rock it till 99.9, .9, that kind of thing, right? I don't want to sit in a wheelchair shitting myself for the last 20 years. I'm not up for that. So it's on me to make sure that I don't put myself in that situation. Right. Right. So when I talk to clients, I say, listen, and, and very much is because I'm at my age and going through some of the stuff I've gone through, I can relate to them, but they can relate to me. Right. So I think that's important. The physical part, we're going to work. We're going to figure out the training, the, the mental part. That's going to take care of itself with the training, the nutrition part. We're going to get you started. We're going to work on that. Right? right. To me, it's the training that sets everything. So in iron, we trust is one of my, my, my models because it's all about the iron. Come in and move some iron. Right. And, and to me, that's the platform that I use to start everything up for everybody. That's awesome, man. I feel like I, I learned like a lot of stuff. Usually I talk a lot. But for me to not say anything and if I'm silent, it's usually because I feel like, man, I'm learning stuff. That's Plus, awesome. I talk a lot, right? So you get me going on stuff that I'm passionate about, you know, then, then yeah, it becomes natural this and stuff awesome. like that. So, uh, yeah, so let me know if I'm getting a little too long with No, no, this, yeah. is, this is awesome, man. Um, what can we look forward to from, from your business moving forward? What are, what are some of the things? I know you, you have a meet coming up uh, March 23rd. Our next meet is March 23rd in Brockville. Yeah, we've got some people from here competing. We just had one in January. Uh, at the Shankman Center in Orleans. It was cool. I think we had nine people from, from a foot above compete oh, yeah. stuff like that. I know I'm putting pressure on you to compete oh, yeah. on one, uh, that kind of thing. So it's always awesome when we see people get in. And, you know, I work really hard on the meets being a great experience. So people walk away going, man, I'm glad I did that. And that was so much fun. And, you know, and I've competed in other federations, so I know what I'm up against. So I really want to keep improving our meets. I want to bring powerlifting to the forefront. Uh, when we look at our meets, 50, 60% of who competes are women. Uh, we had women, two women from here, 70 and 76. Um, I have a married gentleman in his 80s. I have a Al who's 60 who just started competing. There is no age limit. There's age divisions, which is wonderful and stuff. So really, it's a great sport in the fact that it doesn't matter who you are, what age you are, where you are in your lifts. It's a sport we can all do. And as you've seen when you've come to see them, when you're on the platform, everybody's cheering for you. Everybody, the lifters are, the coaches are, the audiences and stuff like that. The audience has no clue what these red plates on the bar mean. Is that 500 pounds or 200 pounds? No one knows. But what they do know is that uh, Elaine at seven years old just walked up and is doing her first powerlifting competition, right? Yvonne at 76, who's done multiple powerlifting federate shows as uh, competitions, is coming up and killing it and stuff like that, right? So listen, you're sitting in the audience at 42 saying, ah, oh, fuck, I'm too old to do shit, right? How can you not be swayed by that amazing display that you just saw up there, right? right? So if, uh, if Elaine at 70 and, and Mike at 80 and Al at 61 and Yvonne at 76 is up there doing it, what the fuck is your excuse? It puts right. shit in perspective, sure. right? It puts shit in perspective, you know? And, and, and I have one guy when he shows up, his name is George. He was old when I started powerlifting. He's in his 80s. And uh, I love the guy. He's a bear of a man. Comes in, a big man, shakes your hand. It's like shaking a hand with a block of cement. He's 80 years old, he walks, he has trouble getting on the bench, he lays on there, it's, you know, finally lays out, <sighs> takes 400 pounds, presses it, racks it, has trouble getting off the bench and walks away. This guy has been doing this since I started powerlifting, right? When he shows up, any of us who have competed long enough that know George, we lose our minds. We're so excited to see him, we're so happy to see him that he's a legend, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? And he's just the nicest guy and stuff wow. like that, right? How many sports can we do? 
Right. Right. Yeah. How many activities can you start today, no matter what your age level and your experience level, that you can actually go and do that? None. There are none of them. It's worth it too. Right. Yeah. So to me, that's why I like powerlifting as a platform for right. sure, uh, and it just gives you more value to your training, and it just you can't help it. It's a like one of the best ways to spend a Saturday. Right. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. Um, so where can people find you? Like, if they want to sign up for a powerlifting meet, if they want to do any sort of coaching with you, where can they find you, and how can they sign up? So I'm, uh, I'm big on Facebook under Kurt Haas. Uh, Iron Haas Gear is my brand name. So last name's Haas, so Iron Haas Gear is my clothing. Uh, but we run our meets out of there as well too. So follow me on that, on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on TikTok or Talk Talk as I was calling it first because I'm old and I was trying to figure that out. I have, I have my cousin Tanya who uh, handles my social media. She has a company called Bruja Social Media. Uh, does a ton of good work for us and stuff like that. So anything we're doing, it's either going to be shown on Kurt Haas or Iron Haas Gear on the Facebook, uh, Instagram, and TikTok platform. So just follow us there and follow us and then we just we, we put shit out there all the time. Any of those ones, you can reach out to me personally if you want to have a conversation, that kind of stuff. Happy to have a conversation with anybody. I take this serious. It matters a lot. It matters a lot to me. So it matters a lot to the individual as well. And I, I want to be there to do what I can to help people change their lives. That's that's my purpose. And, and you know, to me, I'm blessed to be able to do it. And uh, I'm getting smart enough to understand that is what I'm supposed to be doing, right? That kind of thing. So at 55, we're still learning. That is awesome, man. Thank you so much for being on the awesome, podcast. Man. Thank you, man. This yeah. is awesome. I love doing it. You're a great host. And again, you're a coach here. You're smart. You care about what you do and stuff. And I just, I just love it, man. It's, a, you know, people, we had a couple come in here asking about training and Zach was talking to them and introducing me and we're talking about you and stuff. And it was really cool based on what that couple was looking to do and what their issues were. Uh, we have a stable of coaches that can handle any aspect of that, right? So, hey, if you need this, we're going to send you there. And if you want to do more of this, we can send you there. So what was really cool is that we just have an opportunity and an environment in the community here that someone can walk in and if they're just willing to take action, uh, they're going to be taken care of. Right. And to me, I can't help but enjoy being part of that shit. It was awesome. It was awesome, man. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. And done. That's cool. a podcast, bud. Awesome, man.